Okay, the third routine. This is, this is going to be a gait pattern training routine that you do on the mat. Okay, so we're not going to be standing up vertical in this. We're going to be, we're going to be supine or, or uh, laying on our back probably for most of it. Okay, the reason for this uh, routine is to help, it's, it's almost a neuromuscular re-education for people because in our, our culture lots of times our glutes are just not firing for us anymore we gotta we gotta restart those glutes number one and number two is we got we have a sequence or a pattern that's part of the gait pattern that we have to we, we have to use that pattern to, to uh, walk functionally and it has to do with uh, the alternating, there's the arm swing, right? So one arm's going in flexion, one arm's going in extension, or one shoulder is doing that, right? But with our hip, with our hip, with our hips, one hip is going into flexion, the other hip is going into extension, and it, they're contralateral or counter each each other. Okay, it's like this. Sorry, it was in the wrong position. It's going to be like this, right? So now it's going to be like this, like this, like this, like this. All right? We need to, lots of times, neuromuscularly re-educate uh, our central nervous system because we either the glutes stop firing we're not using an arm swing. In any event, we're doing something that's dysfunctional to the gait pattern. So we get on the mat and we recreate the movement patterns and the sequencing, the, the sequencing of contractions and so forth, just to bring it back, bring that motor pattern back into our head. All right. Plus, we probably want to get our glutes re-firing. We want to make sure they're firing. So we use this on the mat gait training. Uh, uh, pattern okay so what we're going to do we're going to start off in a, in a supine position and we're going to use what's called a bridge a bridging pattern okay the bridging pattern everybody knows how to do this don't they a bridging pattern is just this okay and what's happening here is as we bridge up our pelvis is rotating posteriorly. When we come down, our pelvis rotates anteriorly and we can even arch our back a little bit and get a little more anterior rotation. So there's this po anterior and posterior rotation in the sagittal plane that, that we need to, to maybe relearn or recreate. All right? So we're going to do that. There's posterior rotation. There's anterior rotation. Okay? See how I'm lifting? Posterior rotation. Anterior rotation. Okay? That's what we're doing with the pelvis. We're starting out with a bilateral uh, pattern. So, so both things are, both, leg, both sides, both glutes are firing, right? So now we're going to add the upper body piece to this sequence, but we're going to do that in a, in a bilateral pattern too. Again, I like to use little hand weights when I'm doing this, okay? Okay, so when, when we extend our hips, we have to extend our shoulders. So we'll be pushing down, right? Now when we move it from posterior rotation into anterior rotation, anterior rotation is hip flexion, I'm going to flex my shoulders. So we got so now here's the pattern. Po 
posterior, posterior, anterior, or extension, flexion. Okay, like that. And at the top of this, you can't just do this, lift up a couple inches. You really got to push your hips as you're moving into extension, okay? Okay, so this, that's the pattern bilaterally. It's just bilateral bridging. But we're including the, the shoulder piece with the pelvic piece, all right? So it just looks like this. Extension, flexion. Extension, flexion. Extension, flexion, all right? Pretty easy. Pretty easy actually. Okay? So then we take that and we and we make it a little bit more aggressive. And the way we make it more aggressive is we straighten our legs. Okay? So now we're gonna, when we bridge, I call this a supine plank. The bridge just looks like this. That's all it is. I'm up off the mat. Maybe two or three inches. Supine plank. That's it right there. Okay? That's all there is. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm still going to flex and extend my shoulders. Right? So now when I go into that supine plank, I'm pushing down, I'm extending my shoulders. On the flexion piece, I don't worry about anything uh, on the lower body because everything is lying flat on the floor. So I flex my shoulders. I come over into extension, supine plank, flexion. Over into extension, supine plank. Flexion, extension, okay? That's a lot more aggressive than doing it with your hip and knees flexed. But it works great as a diagnostic tool as well as a training tool because you're going to be able to see, start to see right away if there's an asymmetry between the strength of the glutes or even the, the firing and non-firing possible possibility. All right? So anyway, I'll bring this back like this. Okay? So we start out start out this is just a regular bridge. I showed you this in the beginning, right? Extension, flexion, extension, flexion, okay? Now I want to make that a little tougher, so I move in, into the supine version of that. Extension, flexion, extension, flexion, extension, flexion, okay? I might do 10, 15, or 20 of, of each of these, okay? So now, we're going to shift this into, neuromuscularly speaking, into a, the pattern, uh, the gait pattern, okay? So the way we do that is, we know that when our left hip flexes, our right shoulder flexes. And if our right hip is extending, our left shoulder is going to extend, okay? That's the contralateral uh, pattern, right? So I start right in the pattern, okay? I'm going to take this, I'm going to start in flexion on the right hip. So I'm going to be in flexion on the left arm. Now I, bri I bridge, okay? So now we're going to bring that all together. I'm going to shift. Now I'm in left hip flexion, right shoulder flexion. But I'm bridging off my right foot, so that right glute 
is really uh, getting loaded up. So even though this is supine on the mat, this is the contraction sequence in the sagittal plane of the hips and the shoulders, okay? You can see on my feet, I'm pushing off my heel. If you start pushing off your toes, you're going you're gonna to mess up the contraction pattern, okay? So you're just moving like this, okay? That's great. Now we're going to do that in the supine position. And then it gets a little gets a little harder. This is where you find out if you have a glute that's not firing, or if, if there's really a big asymmetry between the left strength on the left and the strength on the right. It's okay though because this way, this is how you diagnose it. This is how you fix it. Okay. Okay. So the same thing. I'm going to start in one of the positions. Right. That's it's right here. Hip flexion on the right side, shoulder flexion on the left side. So then, as I come down, that's all it is is this. Okay. The straighter that you can keep your knee, the more aggressive you're, you're uh, performing it in. All right, so that takes the original pattern, makes it a little tougher. Now I'm going to throw in, it's almost an oscillating motion in your, uh, in, in, in your hamstring, a pre-stretch and a contract. But this gets a little bit, even a little bit more aggressive. Right? So like I'm, I'm like this, ready? Right? As I come up, ready? Right? Like this, I'm gonna snap my knee into extension like I'm trying to kick a soccer ball. You know that great soccer move. My legs are gonna go like this. All right, ready? So. regular bilateral bridge okay. extension flexion extension flexion extension flexion okay we move to the Supine plank version of this. And come over. That's all it is right there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. So then we go back and we get the proper sequencing. Just a bridge. Rotation, contralateral rotation. Okay, we got it. This is a little, this is a lot more. Plank position. Right? 
Got it. Okay. That's what it looks like from the side. Anyway, that can feel like a, a little bit of a workout. It's mostly, we want to make sure that the contralateral flexion and extension between our hips and shoulders at the same time as they're counter-rotating. It can be a little complicated, so it helps to break it down on the mat and get the, the pattern functioning and the sequencing correctly, all right? And when you stand up, it's a lot easier to become aware of the hip and shoulder counter-rotation, the contralateral flexion and extension and so forth, okay? All right, so that's the, the gait training uh, routine that's the on the mat routine, all right? So you've already learned it from me, so give it a try. Make sure you're working at it, okay?